Hello and welcome back everybody. Uh, at the end of the last video I, I stopped the recording but um, the, the only thing I changed is GitHub found some more changes in my project. I went ahead and created another commit and then pushed that to the server. So if you want to jump in at the point we're in right now um, it is uh, go to GitHub and download Season 1 Episode 11 Commit 2 and that, that'll, that'll put you at the start of Season, season 1 Episode 12. All right, so now we're going to keep working on this enemy. Um, we're going to do some basic scripting. And I think that the easiest way, um, maybe the easiest way right off the bat, to understand what we're going to do is to understand these things called components. So we have this creature, and maybe we should start with something simpler. Let, let's start with just a rock. So um, I'm just going to duplicate this and move it toward the player. Um, if I put it on top of the player and then reset the transform, it puts it sort of like right on top of them. And we're just going to move it away a little bit so you can see it in the player's view. Um, take it off the player, and now it's just sort of like standing on its own. Um, so if we go into play mode, you can see it just sitting there behind the enemy. This guy needs to calm down. Uh, let's, let's just give this guy his default animation back. Oops. Okay. So um, this rock, rock three, we're just gonna call this scripted rock. And um, if you've done basic scripting before, you can go ahead and just skip this lecture. Um, right now I'm just showing you how to how to use code to do something with this giant boulder. So, when we get started, um, it, it, I think it'll help to understand conceptually what's going on. So you have a transform component. Um, this component gives this boulder um, sort of like a scale in space, a rotation, and a position. Without this transform component, you don't have a rock. Like, the transform is the essentially the basic existence of a rock being here in space. Um, then you have a mesh filter, and if you click on this, you can see it's it's just got this mesh. Um, the mesh filter it's used for um, sort of like calculating how th how the mesh should be rendered. Um, so for our scripted rock, we have a mesh filter. We also have a mesh renderer, and then this has our attached material. So, so these two sort of work in conjunction to render the thing on the screen and calculate um, lighting and, and things like that. Then we have an animator. I don't know why that would be on there. Uh, we should go ahead and delete that. I hope that's not on all the rocks. Of course it is. So I'm just going to go rock. Um, that, that's just wasting memory space. Oh, it's not on all of them. Okay. So... Uh, I'm just going to select all the rocks and delete that, because that's just wasting memory space. Um, there's no reason whatsoever for that to be on there. So going back to this, um, we have a mesh render and we have a box collider. And now this is what gives the box physics properties. So this this is actually what you bounce off when you run into the rock. Um, and just to make that more accurate, we can change it from a box collider to a mesh collider. And you can't really see it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I had a frog in my throat, so I had to pause the video. Okay, so you can't really see it, but there is a perfect mesh running around this now. So as we run into it, um, we're just going to hit the rock at every point where it sort of caves in. Uh, it's just got a perfect um, physics box around it. So now these are all components, and now if we want to we can add our own components using code, and then we can also do things to these components. So if you ever want to use code to move the rock, all you have to do is write some code that accesses the transform. And then once you have access to the transform, you can you can write code that does whatever you want to the position, to the rotation, or to the scale. Um, I, I hope that makes sense. Uh, so go to Assets, Create a Folder. I'm just going to call mine Scripts. Oh, I already had a Scripts folder. Okay, delete that, go into the scripts folder, and create, um, I'm just going to call this 
scripted rock. Or let's call it rock behavior. I try to keep my names as explicit as possible. Um, you you should be able to know exactly what a script does just by reading the name. Okay, so now I drag that onto the rock, and you can see, just do it once, um, you can see it has this new component here. And this component, if we're clever, can access any other component um, and any other game object. And I don't particularly like Visual Studio. It's kind of slow, and the the code completion on Mono Develop is actually more aggressive, um, which makes me code faster. So I'm going to go into Edit, Preferences, External Tools, and then just change this to the built-in Mono Develop. Uh, looks like it finished. Now open up Brock Behavior again, and instead of opening up the the very slow, kind of overpowered Visual Studio, I'm just going to edit with Mono de Mono Develop. So you can um, click on this line, hit Control X to ignore that, Control X to delete that, and then now we have some code that we can work with. Uh, I'm gonna save this with Control S. Um, now let's just create a variable, and we're gonna call it transform. All right. Well, so when you create variables, the first thing you have to do is give them a type. So if you're creating a number variable, you can call it int. So you could say int uh, age equals five. Um, and then later on, you can edit that value by saying age equals six. So you need to end pretty much like th this. This is an assignment. You're 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 creating a variable and then you're giving it a number. You need to end that line with a semicolon and then the same thing here. You're you're taking that same variable, you're giving it a different number, and then you're ending that line with a semicolon. Um, we we need to be able to access the transform component of this scripted rock because we want to do things to it like either we can edit the scale the rotation or the position using the transform component so getting that is actually really simple um, the component is of type transform so when you create a variable you always need to give it a type and then we're just going to call it tran um, my transform and then um, this this is called a method so void is the return type. Uh, th this function doesn't return anything, so we just put void there. And then um, start is a built-in method that Unity calls. So as soon as as soon as this scene starts in the game, this method is going to be called on every single game object with the start method. So for example, I can just type print hello world and then save that. Now we go back to Unity and start the scene. And we have the script on the rock and it hopefully it printed something to the console. And yep, you can see we have the word we have the phrase hello world. Um, if we add that script to multiple objects. Now we have two rock behaviors. We're gonna start the game and you can see it printed twice. Um, if you're following along and you did that, congratulations! You just wrote your first, um, your first piece of code. That that's actually kind of a an awesome thing. You should be proud of yourself. Um, most people never make it that far, um, and writing code is a little bit scary at first. So, um, just be proud of yourself because that's awesome. So, the very next thing we're going to do is get access to this transform component because we need to be able to edit this but we we, we don't um, have a reference to it yet so we're going to do my transform equals get component transform and now what this does is um, our code right here it's running within this rock object but these components don't necessarily know about each other and so when you use the get component method you're finding that transform component on that game object and you're you're assigning it to this variable so now this variable is essentially a pointer to our, our transform component um, I hope that makes sense but basically 
we're just gonna um, right now we're just gonna grab that component and then do something to it. So my transform dot um, the dot operator lets you access fields and variables within a component. So let's say we just want to scale this. So we're going to do my transform dot local scale equals new vector three. And then we're just going to pass in some values. We'll say five, five, five. Like that. And so now local scale, it's a, it's a, is it a property? Um, yeah, it, it's, it's a property of transform that expects a vector three value. A vector three value is, it's just a triplet of numbers. And so you, you, you just call new vector three and you create a triplet and you can pass in whatever values you want. Like we could even pass in like three, five, uh, one, whatever you, whatever you want. Um, now if we run that, it's going to change the scale of this object as soon as it starts. And you can see it worked. Um, our code actually did something. We're, we're using lines of text to procedurally edit the world. Um, to me, that's fascinating. I, I hope you think that's interesting too. Um, it, it might not look like much now, but there is an unbelievable amount of power in writing code. So this video is getting pretty long. Uh, I don't want to quite cut it off yet because I'm. I, let's let's just do one more thing. My transform dot uh, look at. So now what this does is the transform component has a built-in function called look at. We're going to access that, and we just have to give it dot look at. We just have to give it a vector three world position. Um, so what, let's say we want it to look at the player. Um, to do that, we need to find the player's position. Um, so the, the easiest way, th this isn't the most processor-friendly way. Um, it, if, if we were doing this for our actual game, we would want to do it a little bit differently. But, but for now, we'll just do it this way. So I'm going to comment that out. And I'm going to create a new variable that has a reference to the player. So we're going to call this, it's, it's of type transform. We're going to call it player transform. And that's going to get game object dot find and then the name of the character. So every single frame, actually let's, let's just do that right, right at the start of the game. Sorry, I know this is probably confusing, but we, we don't want to do that search every single frame update. So at the very beginning, we're going to create a variable called player transform. As soon as the game starts, we're going to take player transform and we're going to assign the actual player to it. Um, this is a, this is a unity method that searches through all the game objects and picks the one that is named FPS controller. And we're assigning that to player transform. So now later on in the game, uh, player transform will always point to exactly where the player is. And then we can do update my transform.look at player transform dot position. And so now as we circle around the rock, it should sort of look at us. Um, except I broke something. Oh, okay. Uh, it doesn't like this line of code. Or I mean, it doesn't like this line of code. Um, game object dot find finds a game object, and I'm trying to assign it to a transform type. So we're just going to say dot transform. So now we're finding the game object, we're taking its transform component, and we're assigning it to the player transform. Save that, go back to Unity, play. Okay, and now you can see um, the rock knows where we are, and it knows how to sort of rotate to face us. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and stop stop that, go into GitHub. All we changed was this rock behavior script, and we'll call this season one episode. Uh, what episode are we on? I don't even remember. I think this is episode 12, um, but I'm going to cut the video off here. Uh, it, it should be pretty obvious to you guys what episode I'm on, so if you want to jump back in at this point, just download the right commit. Thanks. Bye.